In this video, we're going to focus on thermal stress and strain. So let's start with the first problem. A steel circular rod with a radius of 10 centimeters is placed between two vertical supports at 15 degrees Celsius. What compressive force is exerted by the vertical supports if the temperature increases to 40 Celsius? So let's say that's the first vertical support and this is a steel beam placed right between them and here's the next vertical support. So the vertical supports are fixed in place. Now what's going to happen to the steel beam if the temperature increases? If the temperature goes up the rod is going to expand so it's going to get longer. Now because it's fixed in place by these two vertical supports those vertical supports will exert a force that will prevent the rod from expanding. So therefore, the vertical supports are under thermal stress. Keep in mind stress is the force applied divided by the area. But in this example, we want to calculate the compressive force that is exerted by these vertical supports. So what equations can we use? Well, we know that the elastic modulus, also known as Young modulus, is the ratio between stress and strain. And stress is defined as force divided by area. Strain is the change in length divided by L0. So in this equation, let's isolate F. So first, we need to rearrange this fraction. So right now, we have that E is equal to F divided by A, and that's divided by the change in left over L0. Now, in algebra, perhaps you heard of the expression keep change flip. I'm going to keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction. So now let's multiply both sides by A times delta L. So on the right side, these will cancel. On the left side, we're going to have E times A times delta L. And that's equal to F times L0. Now, another equation that you need to be familiar with is this one. The change in left is equal to alpha, the coefficient of linear expansion, times L initial times delta t. So anytime you increase the temperature, you can calculate the change in length based on that formula. Now what I'm going to do is replace delta L with this expression. So this is going to be E times A times alpha L0 delta t, and that's equal to F times L0, or L initial. Now we could cancel the initial length of the rod. So now we have the equation to calculate the compressive force. So the compressive force is going to be the elastic modulus or Young's modulus. These are the same. So you might see, uh, you might see this symbol in the equation. So it's E times A times alpha times the change in temperature. The elastic modulus of steel is given to us. That's 200 times 10 to the 9 and it's newtons per square meter. Now to calculate the area we have a circular rod so the area is going to be pi r squared. So that's pi and 10 centimeters is 0.10 meters if you divide it by 100. So 0.1 squared times pi will give us an area of 0 0.031416 square meters. And then alpha, the coefficient of linear expansion, is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1 over Celsius, or Celsius to minus 1. And then the change in temperature which is the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature, 
So that's 40 minus 15. So that's a change of positive 25 degrees Celsius. So notice that the units square meters cancel and also Celsius cancels. So we're going to get the force in newtons. So it's going to be 200 times 10 to the 9 times 0 0.031416 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6 and then times 25. So the answer is going to be 1.88 times 10 to the 6 newtons. So in this problem, we still have two vertical supports. And the aluminum metal bar is clamped between them. Now what's going to happen if we decrease the temperature? If we decrease the temperature, the metal bar is going to contract. It's going to get smaller. Now, because it's attached to two metal clamps, those clamps will exert a tensile force as opposed to a compressive force to stretch the metal bar back to its original length. And so the material is now under thermal stress because there's a force that's keeping it beyond its natural length at this new temperature. So how can we calculate that thermal stress on the aluminum metal bar? Well, we know that the force acting on it is equal to the elastic modulus times alpha times the area times the change in temperature. Now, thermal stress is force over area, so we need to divide both sides by A. So the thermal stress on a material is equal to the product of the elastic modulus times the coefficient of linear expansion times delta T. And so this is the formula that we need. Now let's go ahead and plug in everything that we know. So F over A is going to equal the elastic modulus, which is 70 times 10 to the 9 newtons per square meter. And then we have alpha, which for aluminum, that's 25 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by Celsius, or 1 over Celsius. And then the change in temperature, so the final temperature is 10, the initial is 30. 10 minus 30 is negative 20. Now I'm not going to worry about the negative sign, but just know that the change in temperature is negative 20. 70 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 25 times 10 to the minus 6 times 20, that's equal to, let me count how many zeros I have. This is 35 million, which is 3.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons per square meter. If we look at the units, only Celsius cancel. So we got newtons per square meter. And so this is the thermal stress that the material is under. Now let's move on to the next part. Calculate the tensile strain, or the thermal strain. So we know that the elastic modulus is the ratio between the stress and the strain. So let's rearrange this equation. If we put this over 1 and cross multiply, the stress is going to equal the elastic modulus times the strain. So to solve for the strain, we've got to divide by E. So the tensile strain is the thermal stress divided by the elastic modulus. And so the thermal stress was 3.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons per square meter. And the elastic modulus for aluminum is 70 times 10 to the 9 newtons per square meter. And so the strain, the thermal strain, is 5 times 10 to the minus 4, and it's unitless. And so this is the answer. Number 3. The ultimate compressive strength of concrete is 20 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square meter. If a block of concrete fits perfectly between two strong supports at 20 degrees Celsius, what is the maximum temperature that the block of concrete can have without fracture. 
So let's draw a picture. It's in between two strong vertical supports. And we're assuming that the vertical supports do not expand much with a change in temperature. So we're keeping this problem simple. We'll just focus on the block of concrete. Now, as we raise the temperature, we know that the vertical supports will exert a compressive force. So the material is under thermal stress. If the temperature gets too high, eventually the thermal stress will exceed the ultimate compressive strength of the concrete and it's going to fracture. So we need to replace F over A with the ultimate compressive strength in order to get the answer we're looking for. And so that's going to be 20 times 10 to the 6. And the elastic modulus of concrete is 20 times 10 to the 9. And alpha is 12 times 10 to the minus 6. And let's calculate the change in temperature. So 20 times 10 to the 9 divided by 20 times, I mean 20 times 10 to the 6 rather, divided by 20 times 10 to the 9 is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And then divide that by 12 times 10 to the minus 6. So the change in temperature has to be 83.3 Celsius. So this is the difference between the final and the initial temperature. Now the initial temperature is 20. So we got to add 83.3 to 20. And so the maximum temperature is going to be 103.3.